have been because I did eat a king size pizuki. Yeah, I can always count her about the amazing fries I had yesterday. Oh, <laughs> and Ben can't eat fries for another three months. Oh, <laughs> and there are some fries here in town which are so good. Certainly when you eat them with mayonnaise. Oh. I'm sure everybody out there has seen the uh, the Five Guys guy saying uh, reviewing the Five Guys burger and reviewing the fry that bites back. Uh, I love Five Guys, one of my favorite places to eat, but uh, Kevin and I did make a bet that uh, I could not make it to the season four finals without eating a french fry. So far, so good, but yesterday Kevin went to Five Guys and he brought me back a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Five Guys. And uh, Hey, I'm just trying to do something nice for you. And uh, as, 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 as wonderful of a gesture as it is, <laughs> I've had to uh, hide the gift card from my, from my view. I, I put it under some books. Wow. Nice friend. I bring you a gift and this is how you treat it. Don't you worry, Kev. You could have just got five burgers I, there. In, in January, after our season four final is done, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll treat you to five, guys. It'll be my treat Okay. on your gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Fnatic Alive is of course a Korean tavern spawning on the right side of Metropolis. He had sick mind games in the first game on Cloud Kingdom and really nice SCV lap uh, <laughs> around the, well, what was it, fourth base basically and then back to the natural again. Really cool stuff from Alive. Moro is probably going to scout a little bit better, of course. Moro, uh, Stefan Anderson. Moro still doesn't have a team, by the way. Yeah, it's kind of that's unbelievable. That's kind uh, of like bizarre. Uh, his in-game ID right now is Mouse Moro, but as we know, he is no longer a part of Mouse Sports. Mm. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't really know what I think about that. I'm sure that teams have made offers tomorrow. Yeah. I guess he's maybe just waiting for the right one to come along. Um, and uh, I still think he's, he's such a... I don't know, such a talented player, and he's proven it all along. I know that a lot of people think, like, ah, oh, he didn't really have the same results anymore after he switched to Zerg. But even in one of the very first tournaments he played with Zerg back then, he made it all the way to the final. The Oz is uh, rock back then, the one that Red won. Uh, Red played Moro in the final, and that was still when Moro played already Zerg. And yes, that was an all-European event, but that's still impressive in oh my eyes. The European scene is very strong, and Moro mm. played ZVZ in that tournament, not TVZ, right? That was before he made the yes. switch to playing Terran against that Zerg. That is correct. And that was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I never felt that was a really good decision for him to play TVZ, because then I feel that you can't really leather anymore, because you one out of three matchups is going to be useless, or two out of three if you start leathering as Terran. Uh, in any case, I still think Moro is an absolutely fantastic player, and I really just hope that it doesn't it's not going to take so long that he can't afford to go to certain events anymore, and yeah, I don't know. I, I would I would be really sad if we see Moro slowly but steady disappear. But as you said, Benny's playing a lot of harder to swarm, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Stefan is going to go all out when the game comes out. And he was the king of the beta in uh, Wings of Liberty, even though that uh, other players have won the king of the beta tournament. I think Idra won that tournament. But of course, the, the real king was the one who won the first international tournament. And that was Moro back then with some excellent Reaper play. <laughs> I can see Moro winning another first tournament with Reapers again, this time with high ground vision. Yeah, and it could come back. Man, yeah. the Reaper in Heart of the Swarm is so good. And I cannot wait to cast some Heart of the Swarm this weekend with the Root guys. You need uh, Kev's already talked about it a little bit, but I just want to revisit it once again. Saturday, we'll be playing two best of fives, our, quote, semifinal round with uh, as the Root guys do show down. That'll be free for everybody, so please tune in, watch some high-level competitive Heart of the Swarm. Sunday, the grand final is going to be subscriber only. So uh, if you haven't already picked up that HD pass, now's a good time for it. You can still use the, the uh, discount code OHANA underscore bitter and get $5 off that HD pass. And it's LTV underscore Roddy. You get $3 off. You don't get 5 off you on do. your... $5? Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. It's I done. <laughs> oh, you're just calling things out I again. I just announced it. You're just going to be in trouble. So again. either Barbie's going to come in here and yell at me, <laughs> or uh, or she's going to make it happen. Make it happen, Babs. <laughs> uh, you still never watch Entourage, right? You have to watch that series. It's great. Anyways, we see the first Hellions rolling out for a live. Four Hellions on the field right now, Ben. And he's going to go um, uh, add a couple of Benchies in the mix as well. Now, that's interesting. I'm curious to see how Moro is going to be able to deal with this. Moro is up to 39 drones already, seven more in production. So he's going to bounce all the way up to 46. That's quite a few Queens. Four, I believe, right now. That is correct. Uh, it doesn't have an evolution chamber yet, Ben. And, of course, lay attack is far off. Yeah, it's so going to get a little bit dicey. dicey. <laughs> As we're going to have some Hellion Cloak Banshee play unfolding fairly soon. Uh, I mean, there's still plenty of time for Moro to get some sort of pieces in place. Yeah, he's layer only 70 seconds away, cloaking 70 seconds away. So 
It's not oh, gonna kill him. but oh, four Hellions in this the main could base. Be really bad. This is Moro. a terrible thing to have happen. As uh, Hellions are just gonna run right oh. past. Oh, drones are so lined up. Moro trying to micro, but no, it's holy kind of backfiring. Smokes. Moro have, lost uh, so many drones already. Fifteen drones went down, and all the Hellions are still alive for some reason. Uh, two more, I believe. One more went down. And this final Hellion will probably get cleared up. But during all this, Ben Moore has been so busy dealing with his Hellions that he still did not make any detection. Yep, uh, Layer is morphing, so he can't. He can. He can make Overseers when the Banshees show up. But that is still it's build time. 16 seconds. Wow, I think we were both pretty wrong regarding uh, predictions for this series, Ben. As this command center, third command center already for our lives in production right now as well. We have 45 drones against 38 SCVs. Banshee flew right over a creep tumor, so Morrow should react pretty quickly with uh. some sort of detection, unless, he, of course, he didn't notice it. And that appears to be the case as uh, one drone down already, and this Banshee going to make her way right over to... Oh, I guess we're just going to hang out in the third base. Yeah, there are two more drones. Those two drones popped. Wrong place in the wrong time, Ben. There's really nothing else they can say. Uh, Overseer is out now, and with three queens, the, uh, the Banshee harass oh. should be chased away. Uh, but this Banshee still gives so much to Alive. It's not just a harass unit. It's also map control. It's also uh, yeah. just a real nuisance. It's, it's something that's going to uh -huh. occupy a lot of Morrow's APM. And, and, of course, we see a second Banshee up in the main base now. There is a score crawler in position. Which gives uh, detection right now to this Banshee. So Morrow is getting quite a few shots off on this already. But uh, his drones are taking some serious damage as well. He's still just making, making drones, though. It's kind of crazy. He lost so many drones already. But he's still in a nice work lead because all he really did so far it will drones. He, he lost, lost 25. So many drones. 25. Uh, finally, I think the Banshees are kind of gone for good. Uh, but if we look back in Elias' base, we can see that he does have a third command center completed. It's turning into an orbital right now. Mm, double armory is going up as well, so we might see heavy mech play out That's of uh, Alive. That's interesting. Because I actually feel that if he would have followed up with a similar push as he did before, which of course wouldn't be similar because he had Banshee Harass now as well, but... I mean, this is a great threat. We've seen it quite often. The MVP Mac, which mm, is kind of what it boils down to. Look how Moro is being with his scouting, Kev. He's morphing an Overseer, and look at the rally points on that Overseer. Where is uh, it? It's right there at the top of the third base. He's heading right for those armories. Moro basically scouted with one Overseer, didn't see the whole base, and instantly morphs another one because he uh, felt that it was important that he see what's going on in there. Second Overseer will spot both of those armories. And as silly as it sounds now, Ben, like... Killing all those drones was obviously fantastic for Alive, certainly because he didn't really lose anything besides those four Hellions. Uh, his Banshees are still alive as well. Uh, alive, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was really not on purpose. <laughs> but the thing is, with this playstyle of Alive, he's going to give Moro the time to yeah, at least max I, I out I once. And uh, Moro has double evolution chamber. It seems like he wants to play a Zergling based star. I would love to see Moro just drop the Roach Warren. And I don't know, Ben, just I'd be super active with Roaches. Uh, or perhaps well. still try to go for that roach drop, even though it's going to be a little bit later. But Moro is going to be able to max out once. I still love the point you're making, Kevin. Uh, Alive did incredible damage with his harass. Mm. And the way you capitalize on that is by then following that up with some kind of timing because the Zerg player can't drone anymore. Can't drone he, or can't make units, one, because he has to choose, right? Uh, in this case, Alive has chosen a follow-up that is just, all right, I killed 30 drones, now I'm not going to do anything. And I'm 17 workers behind. Yeah. Or so 26 in this case. This is basically best case for Moro. Granted yeah. that Alive will eventually push the big, strong, scary mech army. Yeah, it's still good. Oh, well, this is Trox for Rocks. Used to be a creep tumor. Man, I don't like that. Do you like that? I prefer the creep tumor also. Because <laughs> I'm Zerg, man. You just knight us out there, make an overseer. Double Spire going up now for Moro already, but I just agree with you because it doesn't really matter how much damage Alive did. Moro is going to be able to max out, and it's still good for Alive. Alive has done pretty much everything right so far. He's going to go up to four bases pretty much uncontended as well. Uh, but he's still going to face an incredible scary army. A little bit annoying picking off the drones that were to be extractors. Ooh, investors. Investor. Roach Warren being morphed in now as well, while Hive is already on the way. This is going to be a super quick Hive, by the way, for Moro. Certainly considering the fact he lost 29 drones throughout yeah, the entire game. Yeah, like still well having a relatively early Hive. It's very quick Seeker Missiles, by the way, for a life. Yeah, yeah, I think he realizes exactly what he's up against, and he's already sort of making preparations against that. Moro's done a 
awesome job of spreading creep and putting himself back in the game. He's now on 97 harvesters. That is enough harvesters to do whatever the hell he wants for the rest of the game. Double spire going down with this hive. So it's definitely going to be a big, big focus on Broodlords. 11 more drones. That's going to be 110 well, workers for Mara. Nine. <laughs> it's oh, going to go close to on, 120, Stephon, man. This is too much. Well, he's probably going to make a lot of spine crawlers and spores now. Our life starts moving out, man, with the first little uh, tour-based army. And there's no army for Moro. No, but he, can, but he can make so much. How much larva do we have, What Moro? is he going to make? He can he make pure lings. He can make roaches. It's always good. You know it's true. He doesn't have a roach one. He does. Where? Oh, it's in the back of the Never mind. Uh, still hasn't produced anything, though. I think he obviously wants to get his greater spire out. Uh, but this is a really scary-looking push, Kevin. And he, Moro really could have stopped at 80 Oh, drones, he's going to lose four of those infestors. He's making a lot of spine crawlers right now. He still has 110 drones, one Ling and one infestor. Uh, this classic case of just overdoing it with the workers. Uh, that 30 larva, that 30 extra larva that, that turned into drones number 81 through 110, that could have been 30 roaches. That could have been 60 zerglings. That could have been any number of things that would have allowed him to take back some map control. Even mutas, Kevin, 30 mutas would crush this push. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and he had double spire, so he could have done that as well. 50 drones went down for Moro throughout this entire game. Benji's having a field day over here as well. So obviously those links won't be able to shoot up. We have a couple of roaches in production right now. It's just uh, it's a little too late. Yeah, way, way too late. Uh, Corruptors are on the way. If there's a single hope for Moro, it said he can get some brute lords out. But uh, I just don't know if it's going to happen. Lings do manage to catch a, a Thor in transition, but uh, Hellions immediately come wow. to react. And the Thor doesn't even die, man. The this Thor's is one right. of the real strengths of this kind of late game mech army. So beefy, so much, uh, so many hit points. It's just so hard to kill. Seven Thors and two more in production. This is like between Thor, Heli, and only. A couple of Marines joining in, but those were more from the start. Grow to spawn on the wrong hatch as well, and will fall immediately. Moro only at 116 supply, and uh, of which 70 is drones. Still with 70 drones, though, means that, you know, yeah. if he can stabilize, he can... Uh, yeah, but he lost two hatches. That's a big problem. A huge problem. Uh, Alive sees these brood lords morphing, and he's just going to come right after them. Uh, spine crawlers going to fall very, very quickly. Thor's kill spine crawlers so fast, Kev. Oh, and uh, Alive did a fantastic job, by the way, during all this. Still macroing, still taking new bases, taking his fifth and sixth base right now. That's a great fungal growth by Moro, no doubt. And most of these aliens will fall right now. Thor's getting some really big shots off on all these brood lords, and brood lords are fantastic, Ben, but not in these numbers. Unfortunately, no, Kevin, and they're also oh God. Uh, not oh. that good for oh this sort of range. GG is called, and Moro plays, uh, well, kind of an underwhelming series against Alive. They're Alive, a very Maybe. quick 2-0 victory. Maybe we could tap back to my screen one more time. <laughs> yeah, workers killed in total. And look at that barbecue. <laughs> look at the barbecue fest. That's so many drones at once. Poor Stefan, really not his series. And uh, it's been a rough season for him as well. Yeah, he is now 0-3 in the North American Star League, a surprising result for a player of his caliber. Yep. Um, I mean, we know he's been playing a lot of Heart of the Swarm, so maybe that's just that's all it is. Maybe his, his brain is tuned to Heart of the Swarm timings right now. Yeah. But uh, a little bit unfortunate, a lot of bit unfortunate. I hate to see uh, players like Yeah, Moro. I mean, losing is one thing, but it actually just felt that this, these two games it was really not the moral that we're used to. Of course, our life played fantastic StarCraft, no doubt yeah, about we that. We don't want to we don't want to no. take anything away from Alive. Not, not there, at all. But Morrow did play quite quite poorly, yeah. just uh, in, in retrospect. So uh, tough games for Morrow Live. 2-0 victory and uh, is now officially on the board. In season four of the North American Star League. That last game, that last series even brought to you guys by stamps.com. Please go to nasl.tv slash p slash stamps, or you can order your own NASL postage. It won't have our faces on it. It'll look just like a regular stamp, but it is an NASL stamp, and you should be, be proud of that. Uh, we're going to take a very short break. We'll be back in just a moment with the final closing thoughts of the day. You don't want to miss it, guys. It's the best part of the show. <laughs> 